Another means of creating an anchor in an emergency situation for protecting your individual party members as a downcline is a bucket seat and buried axe. All we need to create that is a rice axe, a sling carabiner and the rope. <clears throat> the main advantage of the bucket seat and buried axe combination snow anchors is that it's a very safe option. As in you have a bucket seat, you the the layer attaches themselves to the anchors using the rope and then we use a waist belay. So effectively it's a belts and braces setup. The downside to it is it does take a lot longer to create, especially compared to the, the stomper belay. There's a lot of digging involved. But what I'm going to show you now is how to create a bucket seat and buried axe and then how to attach yourself to the axe and set the rope up. So what we're looking at is doing this efficiently and effectively and you need to be working pretty hard. How long should it take you to create one? It's a question that's commonly asked. Well, the bottom line is it really does depend on the type of snow. So if the snow is very hard and it's really icy and it's basically like chipping away at a pavement, then that's obviously going to take you significantly longer. In average snow conditions, so firm but not too soft, not too icy, I, I would say about 15 minutes would, would be reasonable. But as I say, it's very difficult to give an exact time. Could be anything from, you know, like five or 10 minutes to 15 minutes to maybe half an hour, if, as I said, if you're really having to chip away at it. What would be useful to do is to break this whole setup down and look at the, the individual parts that make up uh, this whole snow anchor system. So we'll kick off with the bucket seat first and we'll chat about the size and the construction of that. So a key principle in understanding how snow anchors work is understanding that what we're doing is we're placing an object in the snow and the surface area of that object is where the, the load is then going to be spread. So when we place an object in the snow and we load it, the surface area spreads that load across quite a wide area. And hopefully then that a load spread across that area is less than the strength, if you want, of the, the snow pack. And hopefully your anchor works. That's why understanding that the, the, how good or how poor the snow is is really quite important when we start using snow anchors. So when we're doing this setup here, the first thing that we would do is dig the, the actual bucket seat. And the advantage of digging the bucket seat first is that we're going to get a, an indication of what the strength of the snow pack is by how hard or how easy it is to dig this. Also as we're digging we're going to get uh, a little bit of a profile of the snow pack. We can identify where the, the more firm snow is and then that would help us decide how deep we're going to bury our axe. The trick here is to dig just enough that you can fit in but not excavate some sort of super quarry because that takes a lot of effort and if the snow is really hard you'll be digging this for ages. So there's a balancing act between making it too small that you can hardly get in it and making it too big that you expend a lot of time and energy time to create it. Crucial thing about uh, the, the actual bucket seat here is that this wall here is what actually gives us the strength and snow anchor because when I sit in this um, my bum and the backs of my thighs are what are going to be uh, pushing against this and that's where we distribute the load using that surface area of, of my thighs and bum against the snow pack here. The crucial thing when you're, you're making a snow pack is that actually this wall here should be perpendicular to the, to the slope here. Um, what commonly a lot of folk do is this either this bit isn't deep enough or they create it it's at too shallow an angle that it's more of a launch pad. So when I'm digging, what I want to make sure is as I'm digging, that as I clear the snow out to the side, I'm leaving that front wall is perpendicular. The other thing is, I don't want to make this too deep. Basically, I want that bit there to be roughly about level with my belly button. And how big this is, as I said, is going to depend on, on how big you are and also whether you're going to be wearing your, your rucksack when you're in here. So once I've got this done, I should then be able to get into position like so, and my belly button should be about level with that. And you can see there that the backs of my thighs and my bum are then pushing 
against that front wall. And that's our first line of defence in this snow anchor combination here. The next thing is I need to bury an ice axe up slope somewhere, so we'll get around to doing that. Okay, so the next part then is we need to identify where we're going to bury our ice axe. Now, there's no exact science here as to how far away it needs to be, but as a rule of thumb, you want to, I guess, reach up, reach right up with your ice axe and just draw a line down. That helps give you a bit of a mark, but also means if you stretch right up, they should be far enough away. What we're trying to avoid is the attachment point that's going to go here not being too close because what's going to give us the strength in the anchor is this snow between where we dig the slot for the buried axe and the back wall of this bucket seat. So we don't want this too close, we want more snow up here which is going to help create some sort of strength for this buried axe here. So once I've, I've got the, the, the distance I said reach up and then just come right back down, you're looking probably about a couple of metres thereabouts. So, but in some snow conditions it might actually be more, but you definitely don't want it really any closer. Once I've got that marked up, I then go up to the top of my mark. So this is a slot that I made earlier, and this was dug just at the limit of where I could reach up with the axe. What I then do is start digging a slot that's across the fall line here, and the depth of this is really going to depend on how good the snow is and what the layers are within the snowpack. Generally what I'm looking to do is bury this axe deep enough in the firmest layer. You'd have got that information when you dug your bucket seat earlier because that would have been deep enough to give you a profile of the snowpack. Basically when you start digging away, it's just cutting, you're cutting away from yourself and you just make a slot in the back, that's me through. In this case, that's a harder, icier snow there. And then, what's going to happen, the axe is going to be inserted in the base of that slot like so. All I've got to do is make sure I cut another slot across. And depending on the snow, you might find that you can just drag the pick, uh, the pick, the, the spike, or the pick, just to create a slot. And that slot should come right down from the the bottom of uh, the slot at the back there, that should come right out with no bumps or anything like that. And then all we do then is get a sling out, put a cloth hitch in. So where we put the cloth hitch is going to be at a point where the surface area of the axe is a about equal. A lot of folk talk about the balance point, but the problem with the balance point in some axes is depends on how heavy or how light the head of the axe is. So remember we chatted about that the strength of the snow anchor relies on the surface area of an object distributing the load across the snowpack, therefore what we want to do is balance the surface area of this ice axe in the snowpack. So this point where you put the cloth hatch, cloth, cloth hitch is generally where the surface areas are going to be about equal. Then just place it in the base of the slot that's dug, like so, so that the cloth hitch is central to that slot there. Okay, so the next thing, once you've got your axe buried and you're happy with that, next thing is then attaching yourself to the anchor. Now, there's lots of different ways of doing this, so I'm just going to use one of many ways if you want to see what other ways that you can tie in, then again, the MTUK Winter Skills Handbook will show you uh, a few other options, and I'm sure on your training course the trainers will cover other variations. The thing to emphasise is there is no one way, there's quite a few different ways. It just happens I'm going to use, just tying my bow in, and then I'm going to attach myself that way. So whatever method you use to tie in with, a key thing to bear in mind is once you're actually attached to the anchor, is we shouldn't really be hanging off the anchor. The rope should be snug, but you don't want it bar tight so you're actually suspended from uh, your buried axe here. As I say, there's lots of different ways of doing this. This just happens to be a way.
Shift it right around. Make sure the attachment point is then shunted right around to the small of your back. And the next challenge is to get the rope around to set up our waist belly, our body belly. The trick here is to think like it's like a skipping rope and get a loop and basically we're going to loop it right up and over. And just make sure that it's actually coming round the bottom of your rucksack. If you're wearing ski poles, you, know, you have to be really careful because the rope has a tendency to snag on your ski poles. And once the rope's set up, you should find that the load rope, going to one of your party members, is flush with the top of the bucket seat. That's why we don't want it too deep, so that you end up getting like a little upward pull. It should be, the pull should pretty much be nice and level across the line of the setup from the buried axe through to attachment point through to your waist through to the load rope. One of the requirements of the syllabus is for a winter ML candidate to be able to hold a short slip or a slide. Now I should stress this isn't holding a leader full. The context that this would be in is if you have a party member coming up and as they then come over the short little step just at say this point here, if the step then collapsed and they slid or fell, then you would hold that. Or the worst case would be as they then climbed past you or walked past you, they then tripped or stumbled and took a wee slide. The same in descent, if your party member's coming down, so you get them to get down close to the, the, the snow there, at that point if they then slipped or the, re, or the snow gave way and they slipped, then what we'll be able to do is just hold a short slip. And it's basically going to look like this. So as the person slides down, then that's it. It's going to be no more violent and no more exciting than that. I should stress it's not holding a lead climbing fall. It's only a short little step, a short little slip or a slide.